Adventure Games! It's a topic that I haven't really touched upon on my channel. Unless you count the Mad Max game I drunkenly rambled on about as an adventure game. That's a hell of a fucking death grip you got there, Mr. Fantastic. But we know them well and fondly, from old to new. Everything from their great beautiful landscapes to the memorable and interesting characters, the unforgettable soundtrack and the deep story and lore, the most powerful of weapon and items, and the greatest of treasure and collectibles. From such wonderful games like Spyro the Dragon, the Elder Scrolls games, <laughs> Tombi, that's what the Bell version was called, Oddworld, Alundra, and Arcanum, Chrono Trigger and Super Mario. From the classic Fallout games to the current games, Games like Banjo Kazooie, Final Fantasy, Undertale, Conquest Bad Fur Day, Visceral Cleanup Detail, and Game Ground! What? Haven't played that one? Maybe I'll talk about it sometime. But today, I'm gonna talk about a game that contains all of these things that I've mentioned. But for all the wrong reasons. Today, we will explore a freeware game that I simply can't help myself from being deeply fascinated in. This is a game that is simply known as Goblet Grotto. It's an adventure game like any other, with a great world to wander, people to meet, and a story that unfolds as you travel. But it's a rather unknown game that is hidden in the strange side of the internet. The only way I found about the game was watching Vinesauce Vinny stream back in 2015, on his Full Sauce YouTube channel. It's a truly bizarre experience, and it's unlike any other game that I ever played in my life. This shit's weird, okay? And I played Chase the Chuck Wagon for the Atari 2600! A game where you have to feed a dog in time to avoid it from exploding like a nuclear fucking bomb! Yeah, remember this? Little did I know that there's an actual line of dog food by the same name, which inspired this game. And it had a commercial in the 70s. A dog can get mighty hungry when he doesn't get his chuck wagon. Cause dogs love the soft meat-like chunks, the brown crunchy bits. Serve your dog chuck wagon. Chances are, he's already waiting for it. Yeah, because if Chucky here doesn't get his bowl of chuck wagon that he's been waiting for, he will single-handedly take out the entire fucking institute. But I'm getting off track. This strange little game jolt game was made in 2012 by a group called Academites, who's got 22 other games under their belt. Classic titles such as Murder Dog 4, Trial of the Murder Dog, and Space Funeral. But Goblet Grotto somehow managed to gain a cult following, with people claiming it to be brilliant, and to be the best thing ever to be discovered by man. God damn son, how could this not pique anyone's interest? So come, dear viewers. Join me in a journey of monsters, treasure, and ceaseless adventure. Let us delve in the Goblet Grotto. Adventure awaits me! And here we are introduced to the title screen to the game, where we can witness creatures like winged dragon heads, wizards, massive faces behind doors, and our hero. Zooming in closer and closer to his chest, piercing his heart like a 50 caliber bullet, revealing the halls of chessboard floors and walls of baking grease. Ew. Should this tell us what quality to expect from this game? Cause I'm having second thoughts about all this. Nah, let's just get this started, okay? I got the goblets together. Just like that, the game hits you like a flashbang grenade, leaving you deaf and stunned until you met with your inevitable demise. So let's start over, let's kill these wolves. Let's get rid of this air bursting racket, huh? Simple thing to do really, you just need to alt tab out or click outside the game window within the time frame of this sound being played, then go back into the game. You may have to do this up to three times, then it should go away until the next level is loaded. We have to do it all over again. It's the only workaround that I know of due to the lack of sound options in this game. So this is our hero, named Swampy, the rare adventure Pepe. He comes equipped with an axe, a shield, cape, chainmail, boots and a dildo helmet. He runs around like he dumped ass and he controls like Bubsy 3D. The best PS1 game. But at least Bubsy was able to run forward in a straight line. This man cannot. He will always run at about 10 degrees to the right, 
Probably due to his running animation being drawn like this. So let's have a look at the HUD. We got our health here, shown as hearts. We got this noise up here, which I'll come back to. Goblet counter, food counter. We have a talk button to interact with the game's NPCs. We got an eat button, pray button, both which I will also come back to. Sleep, which is the only way to heal yourself. And a menu button with a very basic pause menu. Resume, save, load and quit. Oh my god, Swampy. Being a bit dramatic, aren't we? It's a quit game button, it's not a cease and desist letter from Disney. Art thou sure thou prefer to quit? Nay, I will not give in it! We also have this button. Let's check it out. No, it's like a welcome screen of some sort. Welcome to the Goblet Grotto official user's guide. Okay, sounds good. What's the commands? Space to kill, arrow keys or WASD to move, and M for pause menu. All other interactions as defined in sidebar, seen here. General tips. Maintain a healthy diet in the grotto. Okay, sounds good. Depressed adventurers are vulnerable to quick snakes and heron bur What? Depressed adventurers? are vulnerable to quick snakes and heron birds. The fuck do you mean? Are these common enemies? Do I take double damage if I'm depressed? Can I become depressed or am I depressed by default? Maybe Swampy Hair is the legendary depressed adventure Pepe, who only shows up once every 500 years to steal people's tea sets and cry himself to sleep on cobblestone paths. I must be missing something important. Hang on, I should consult the manual. Yes, I'm not fucking around. This game comes with a book, as they call it. It's a zip archive called How to Win at Goblet Grotto, comprised of HTML files and JPEGs. So we fire up Start here, and we're greeted with such useful information like sorting equipment, buying a house, accessing the shop, testing your blood, and how to play. All these things, which you cannot do in this game. At the bottom of the page, we have a guide to toad glyphs, Supplementary paragraphs and a monster guide. So let's check out the monster guide. See if we can find anything about the birds and the snakes. What a fucking mess. Really, it's less like pages from a book and more like a sheet of microfiche. It's not even in alphabetical order and I spent way too long searching. But I couldn't find anything about neither quick man nor bird shit. But I somehow managed to find two different entries on WOLF! Fuck the monster guide. Let's have a gander at the paragraphs. Now this should be interesting. Goblet Grotto will occasionally direct you to consult the following pages. Oh sweet candy coated Jesus. There are 200 entries on this page. This is lore! This is all lore for a game that looks like it was drawn by a toddler. I have a feeling that somehow this is going to be the best thing ever. Now lastly, we have the text box. This will tell us information about the area you're in and the people you face. So let's have a quick read of the very first text we are greeted with as the game starts. You are in a black wood. See paragraph 4 for a description of the black wood. You feel tremendously enthusiastic about the prospect of goblets and adventure ahead. Wolves are rapidly closing in on your position. You know, these red demons that killed you when your ears were bleeding. See paragraph 4, okay then. The Black Forest comprises primary forest of the second hemisphere. What? It's estimated to encompass 144,000 hectares of width and 144,000 hectares of length. How big is this world then? The size of the moon? Fuck math, and I don't want to bore you either, so let's just get to the gameplay already. So to the right of the starting point, we can see a village, inhabited by the people of the Black Woods. Let's strike a conversation with this man, greeting us. Are you looking for the goblets? Why yes, my good man. Can you direct me to their location? No. I guess I'll ask someone else then. You there. Can you tell me anything? Sludge-covered peasant? I love being in a warm black sludge. I'll leave you to your activities then. I'll just have a little power nap to heal up my lost health. Why am I on the floor? Why am I on the floor flailing my arms? What happened? Get up, you bum! What is this picture? Bottled meat? 
Oh boy, I never get to talk about the gameplay at all now, do I? Alright, let's look at the glyph guide. Understanding glyphs. Use this page to understand what your toad is saying. Grotto toads, so that's what this creature is, cannot comprehend traditional writing, but they have devised a simple pictographic language. Here are some basic glyphs and their approximate translations. Easy to understand glyphs, such as a ninja turtle as crime, a dragon as a dog, a chainsaw clown as enjoyment, sounds of panic or hyperventilation, a clay bottle as death, and the word shop, meaning agora. Below are examples of extremely common phrases formed by creating compound glyphs. Glyphs such as I am afraid of crime, the birds are too loud, I can never be healed, depression, I'm completely lost, I'm hungry, I'm starving, and I have starved to death. Four of these glyphs you as a player will feel after playing this game. Being sad and lost, unable to understand what you went through and the scars it leaves you, never to be healed.